There we go. Now we're recording live. Now you can. Now you have to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, love- how, the how's the weather over there? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. How's it over there? <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Might be clearing up. It'll be a pretty nice day. <laughs> it, is. it is actually. It's beautiful and sunny here. It's great. Yeah, we're yeah. in North End. We're in the cloud still. So it, it's yeah, well, I'm in there. I'm in White Rock, and we're like it's oh, yeah. it's sunny here a lot more and yeah. it makes a big difference i'm at my and my i have got my office set up up against the windows so i can see the view the entire time nice. and uh considering i spend so long in this damn place you know being able to look <laughs> out of the view seriously i've been you know, in here like eight ten hours a day and being able to be surrounded by the view and natural light makes a massive difference for me it does it does massive yeah. the big windows sure. is just is awesome so kevin how you doing buddy I'm doing really good. It's been yeah. like, I just say it's been like a wild year. It's been about a year ago since we got locked down. I remember my last trip, I was in yep. um, Vegas okay. speaking at a big conference mm-hmm. and then St. Louis doing an event for EO. And yeah. then I uh, came back through Toronto and then all of a sudden, boom, boom. I know. So yeah, it's, it's been crazy. a, it's been a wild year and, but overall things are going really well. Like, That's good. yeah, really it, after the initial adaptation and having to change a lot of stuff, yeah. Um, yeah. My, things are. Yeah. We had, we were talking to a friend of mine, uh, Tony Lilios, who lives in Lake Tahoe yesterday. And uh, we were talking about the um, kind of the quiet, the quiet. I mean, it's mm-hmm. been a year of quiet, but mm-hmm. kind of a little bit more of the self-reflection and, and kind of the working on the inner stuff, um, getting into routines, which is, you know, uh, because being like in this entrepreneurial world, it's like you jump out, jump out of bed and you grab your phone and my God, then everything's on fire and poof, you take off, right? But now it's like, I'm getting up, getting up you know, a couple hours earlier and doing my routine and my stretching and my breathing. And I just got out of the cold water plunge. So I'm still, my yeah. skin temperature is still really cold. And, you know, it's just that, but every single day getting into that rhythm of that morning routine and it's, and it's just been so much better. It's just, yeah, it's kind of that going thing with everybody we're talking to. It's either like COVID has been the worst thing that's ever happened to them or like one of the best things that's ever happened to them for like mental health, personal growth, you know, self-reflection and stuff like that. So it's interesting. And both both are true. It's just a matter of which story you want to play out in your brain. Very. Yeah. Both both, both are true. It could be the best or it could be the worst. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's, that's the master of your mind and the story you want to tell yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to sit around a mope things. or are you going to do something about it? You yeah. can see it as, a, as, as, as empowering your growth and a catalyst for a better life, or you can see it as destroying your life and you can pick, it's just, it's just a, it's a story you pick. And, and those morning routines are a big deal. We just they had are. our, our call, our, our monthly call with all our CEOs, which was started during COVID. It used to be weekly because everyone's like, what the heck do we do? Yeah. Um, and we just laid down a 65 day challenge mm. all through Q2, starting in April, yep. five days a week. What's the one thing you're going to do for yourself for half an hour a day, five days a week, that's going to make the biggest difference. See, there you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. And it's like, and for me, because I've got a pretty good exercise thing, but my body's getting so tight because mm-hmm. I don't move as much. And so for me, it's yoga yes. or some other exercise and stretching. The, the, the stretching is, has to be because I'm getting super tight. You're and getting old too. I am getting old, Nigel. Yes, I, I turned fifty last year, man. I like, know. Oh, I know. I know. I'm not as old as you. I'm not as old 50. as you. Come on. I know. <laughs> but yeah, no. But it's but it's but it's like again for me. That's and our whole team's got our whole team is committed. All the CEOs who are going to commit that we're on the call. But it's that I I know I need to do that, and it's a catalyst for other things. And mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it's really, it's, it's really interesting because I belong to uh, in, in a different, another form group. And uh, it's interesting because we check in once a month and it's like, there's the ones that are, that have, are on this routine every morning, they're getting up, they're doing tick, 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 tick. And then they're starting their day and it's, you know, or they're, you know, they're reading or they're whatever it is. There's the other ones that are just having that struggle and the battle. And I, they do it for a week and they fall off and then they're having more wine than they're supposed to. And then it's this battle, battle, battle. Um, And it's, it's a really interesting, it's just an interesting time, you know, and I'm just really fortunate. I'm really fortunate. Maybe I'm kind of, cause I'm ADD. I'm all over the place like you and like Devin, all three of us, all three of us are blah, 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 blah. But it's that, it's that getting into that routine, like I get up in the morning and I come downstairs and I have my beet juice, beet and ginger juice shot, boom. 
gets me going. And then I just like you, I start doing my stretching and my yoga and my breathing and my foundation training for my lower back. Cause I've been having lower back issues. Yeah. Incredible. This, this guy, uh, Dr. Eric Goodman in uh, California, lower back issues, check him out on YouTube. It's just these 12 minute exercises and it's been incredible. Then we're doing, Devin got me into the Wim Hof breathing and then doing the cold plunges in the ice. You know, we go up to like at Whistler, we break the ice and we go into the, Devin and I go into the lake and we're, but I know but, I've seen the videos. You guys but, are nuts, but <laughs> it's, well, yeah, that's what you think. That's what I thought. No, no, but. no. I know. I know you're crazy. I know you well. Now. You are not. Yeah. Like you are like certified freaking nuts on a normal day. And then you start jumping into cold lakes and cold streams. It's just like, it's just evidence to back up the hypothesis. Yeah, he knows you too well, Nudge. You can't, exactly. you can't go away from that one. Look, look at him laughing. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, you got me. I was, I was going to build something around that, but I'm going to yeah. give up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So uh, I guess maybe, Deb, we should do a bit of a Yes. Guy well, is. <laughs> anyways, here today, our guest is a strategic advisor and coach to CEOs and executive teams across North America and internationally. He has coached my father as well as helped me through the crazy windy road that's called life. Check out his book, Your Oxygen Mask First. Definitely grab a copy. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Lawrence. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It means a yeah. lot. I'm looking forward to it. Just a chance to chat with you guys and, it's, and maybe share some of the stuff that we believe yeah. in common or no. And yeah, I'm literally looking forward to it. Thanks for having yeah. us. No, it's what we do first on our show is we, so here's some interesting stuff is we do what we call two truths and a lie. So Kevin has provided us with two truths about himself and then one lie. And then Devin and I are going to try and figure out, you know, which they are. I, I think I should probably know some of these, love but I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't know, man. I love it. So, okay. So number one is, is this is, I love floral shirts. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I speak four languages. Four languages, four languages. Mm. I know he speaks English. English, <laughs> French. Not that well, but he speaks I English. I was just going to say, that might be stretching it a little bit. Yep. Um, and he made Barack Obama laugh. Oh. Hmm. So, Dev, what are you thinking? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. It's in between the languages and Barack Obama <laughs> laughing, I guess, really. Um. Mm. oh man okay let's go with uh you know what let's just go with the four languages i want to hear about the barack thing yeah and i go i go four languages too because like i said he can barely speak english <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your confidence in me nigel yeah, that's... <laughs> Just to lift each other up here. Uh, he's speaking, speaking better than me, but you know. <laughs> yeah. The bar's low, man. So so your guess that the lie is what? The lie the is the four languages. Yeah. Yes. Is the lie. Yeah, and I could stretch it to be a truth. I mean, I know a tiny little bit of Arabic, and I know a tiny little bit of Hindi. But not enough to say I speak it. So yes, I, I do not know for and French. I mean, you grew up in Canada, you got to learn it, mm. and I know it. Um, pu, you know, a little. Um, bit. Yeah, um, yeah. But so no, I was in Singapore again. This is like one of my last awesome trips before uh, the lockdown. It was like fall of nineteen, mm -hmm. and uh, with my partner, we have a, a partner in Australia, and we do a lot of private events with Jim Collins normally, like in his lab in Boulder. Yeah. Um, and uh, which aren't happening right now, obviously, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But uh, and she puts on some pretty high events. So she also arranged an event with both Barack and Michelle Obama. Oh. So we got to go to Singapore for a week and hang out with one of my best friends mm -hmm. and um, saw, you know, and got to meet both Barack and Michelle. And nice. uh, but it was funny. With, and, and then and then there was a big, um, you know, massive event with 5000 people type thing in a, a stadium in Singapore, which was awesome. Or a event center. It was a beautiful event. Well done. And Barack, whether or not you believe in what he believes politically, I think he's an amazing leader, right? That's right. And so I was thrilled to meet him. But, you know, you go in and, man, and there's like secret service everywhere. <laughs> and, he, and we all had to get pre-screened. you know, I had to get pre -screened. Right. I, I passed, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but then you go through and there's secret service. And these dudes are serious, man. Like if you ever interact with the secret service, it's serious mm. stuff. Yeah. Anyways, and we go in and everyone, and he's being very like, you know, presidential and, um, mm. And, uh, and, uh, and everyone's very serious with them. And then I come in and I happen to know the photographer because we've done some other events together. Mm. And I walk in the room, he's like, hey, Kevin! <laughs> and he just, the photographer kind of freaks out and starts laughing. 
And and then Brock turns and looks and it goes, well, you're, you know, what do you say? Something like something along the lines of, you know, your reputation precedes you or something like that. <laughs> and, and he started laughing his ass off. And uh, and we had a we had a quick chat and got a photo. And I think I have I have the picture here. And, and again, every other picture, he was very yeah. presidential. Here I got too many yeah. trees here. Oh, and you can see there you go. That's cool. He he was like lit up laughing. And uh, <laughs> that is a really good photo. That it is a good. really good yeah. photo. And shout out to Pete. Pete, I think that's Longfellow. I think if I, I'm Pete, I'm sorry, I forgot your name wrong. Pete's an amazing Australian, actually a photographer from Australia. Yeah. He actually did an amazing uh, video shoot for me as I was preparing for a, a big speaking tour I did in Australia. We did that mm -hmm. in Denver. He shot it. He's just an, a gifted, gifted photographer. Anyways, but we got Brock laughing versus his, <laughs> you know, and then I got to ask him, I, you know, I, I, was, I always ask, I was both him and Michelle um, about, about resilience and what they do. And anyway, but it was, it was, that was a funny story. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. And it was awesome seeing him speak too, because right. he shows up very straightforward, humble. And the way he even just approached in the, you know, in the, in, in the interview on stage and that hmm. it was, um, it was uh, pretty, pretty impressive. So, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. That incredible. That's incredible. So, yeah. so yeah, Kevin, yeah, you and I, we've worked together for years and I don't, I'm scared to look back and turn the clock back, but yeah, it's, been, it's like 15 it's, easy. Yeah. At least yeah. 15, I would think. So, I mean, I years was just a little guy. You're a little yes. tiny little guy. Yeah. And it was interesting because I, I'd had a coach um, before you, Terry Jackson. And right. uh, remember Terry, and he yep. worked with the, uh, it was called the Federal Business Development Bank of Canada. Now it's the BDC Business Development Bank of Canada. And we were doing strategic planning with him and et cetera, et cetera. But the, the, the interesting thing was, is that I had this business that, you know, we had just broken off my dad's business. We just started this new business and, um, and I was having a hard time and I was going out with Terry for breakfast and I was telling him all of this stuff about, you know, my personal life. Cause we had three little kids. Devin was one of them. And, and it was a really, really difficult, difficult time. And then Terry said to me, says, Nigel, I can't help you anymore. You know, it, it's <laughs> way above my ability. And so he said, here's this guy's card. His name's Kevin Lawrence, give him a shout um, and have a chat and maybe he can help you. And then boom, that was it. We were, we were working together from then on and Kevin helped me. Um, we set up, I tell people I wrote, I wrote it in my book too. We set up the, this asteroid belt. You remember that? Like this asteroid belt of all these items and these things that I had to get through the struggles and we were chipping away at the little ones and then working our way to the bigger ones and getting into this flow and this rhythm. And then years and years goes by and I had all this stuff on my, my list and we were able to, you're able to work with me. It was incredible because we was able to set up uh, the company AquaGuard to run without me. Uh, in 2012 it's been it was 2012 and uh, so we set it all up and there was one last thing on the top of my list that i wanted because I, I, we we wrote out a one-page plan what, yep. what you know we designed my life 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 by design and kev was just like you know this is what you want to do it's not what other people want it's what you want to do in your life it's, um and i keep going astray and then Kevin would kind of hold me accountable and smack me back on what are my <laughs> goals? Not everybody else's goals. What are your goals? And so that the number one goal at the end of the day is I set my business up, but then it was to take a trip and travel the world with the family for a year. And that was the last thing on. So Kevin calls me to check in and he says, so you got that one thing left on your list. And I'm like, yeah, what is that? He says, well, it's travel the world with your, your family. And, and I said, yeah, well, you know, um, that's really tough to do. I, you know, we, Rako's so busy. I'm really busy. I got the business. We've got all these kids. And, and you said, but no, that's the number one priority on your, on your list. And, mm -hmm. and um, so he said, Kevin said, is Rako there, my wife? And I said, yeah. I said, well, ask her. So I yelled across the room and I said, Rako, you know, Kevin's on the phone and there's this one thing on the list you know, we want to take this year off and travel with the family. Do you still want to do that? And she's like, absolutely. And I said, <laughs> and I said, she said, yes. And he said, okay, well, let's put this thing in motion. And we did, I think we got it going in like three months. It was and really we, fast. Yeah. And we left and we were oh. gone for a year. And so you helped me so much over the years in restructuring the business and getting my life back. I talk about, I wanted my life back. I wanted my freedom back. 
there was a point in time where I, you asked me if somebody was to come up to you, Nigel, uh, and offer you something for your business, how much would you take? I said, I said a dollar. I remember that. <laughs> I should have taken the deal. I, know. <laughs> I said a dollar. I just want my life. I want my freedom back. So it's, you know, it's, it's been, and so you helped me so much and I owe so much to you and um, everything. Cause I would probably be in the, in an institution if, uh, if you hadn't helped me out and um, yeah. And now, and now you've got, um, man, you've got, you know, you're all over the world. You're coaching CEOs all over the planet. Um, uh, from Dubai to India to Australia, U.S. and Canada. You got and, your book, um, your oxygen mask first. That's right. And then you've got your book. So you want to tell us a little bit about your, your new book, your oxygen mask first. Put on your oxygen mask first. Yeah, it feels like my old book now. I'm actually working on two more new ones. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I mean, initially, as you know, I, 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 I was the driver behind and did a huge amount of the work on that book, Scaling Up, which is about scaling yes, companies. Yes, right. Yeah. And that was, you know, was the business side. And then I went over onto the personal side, which is about scaling yourself. Because, you know, as, as we grow companies, we must grow as leaders. And a lot of people like you, Nigel, um, get stuck along the way. Like I remember when we started, you hated your business. And I remember the whole metaphor of you'd put your hand on the doorknob to go into the office and you'd feel like you're getting electrocuted. Exactly. Like you didn't want to do it. Exactly. And that's a common scenario. Yeah. So it's like, you're a smart guy, you're a driven guy with an awesome business, but people go along and then and they get stuck. And so the book is about what do you have to do to keep growing to enjoy the ride? Right. And there's 17 different habits, which are like, you know, 17 different principles that depending on who you are, you know, you might, you, you're going to need to dial in a few of those things to help get to this next level and right. enjoy it. And, and, and it's, so it's been, it's been an amazing journey because I've, you know, in working with people like you, Nigel, and hundreds of CEOs and leaders, you, know, you see some very common patterns. And generally, we have the same conversations again and again, because we have the same struggles. So the book is, you know, the 17 most common solutions to the things that, that make it hard to keep growing as a leader. And whether you're the founding entrepreneur or an executive, or even just a normal human, um, it, the book's written towards, you know, CEOs and leaders, but it's just, it's common sense stuff, but man, when you're in the middle, it's hard. So for yeah, example, the routines, yeah. we've got a chapter called mm -hmm. double your resilience. If you're going to take on double or 10 times the stress, you need to be stronger. There's just yeah. no two ways about it. And, 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 and your mind, your body and your, and your spirit that lights you up and excites you. And, you know, we tend to get ground down because we make big commitments towards these big dreams and visions. And, it, and often we start depleting along the way. And it's like an airplane flying along towards an amazing destination. And then it starts to run out of fuel. It's, it's, it, 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 it ain't good. And, and so we got to keep fueled up. And again, it's logical. And during COVID, yes. as you can imagine, a lot yeah. of people, I mean, a lot of people went into a nosedive. And so anyways, it's, it's just habits and things that are logical, but it's written to highly driven leaders and, um, and you, I mean, you touched on another one, Nigel, which is, mm -hmm. you know, your business could run without you. There's a chapter in a book called make yourself useless. Everybody <laughs> can make themselves. And I know, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> that may have already been the case up front, Nigel, but over time, you, <laughs> you're we formally, go. <laughs> <Here> we go. <laughs> no, but no, but Boom. seriously, no, you're obviously very capable. Otherwise you couldn't have built it, but it's, it's basically working yourself out of a job. So your team is strong and independent. It's, it's no different than being a great parent as a great parent. You get your kids so they're strong and independent, can do things themselves. Right. Well, as a leader, you need to do the same with your team. Again, but most people are way too useful, way too useful. And, mm -hmm. and then they feel the burden of having too much on their shoulders, never mind to hold themselves back. So look, I can go on about this stuff forever. Whole section mm -hmm. on mental health, which is life changing mm -hmm. for people because people don't understand it. And I end up doing a lot of keynotes around mental health. A ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, the, these leaders. So there's certain types of leaders, right? There's certain, certain ones that, I mean, maybe on the outside, it looks like they can handle it all the way through. And there's other ones that have this up and down and they falter. And you, is, is there two types of leaders or is everybody the same or is it, why did, why are some more resilient than others? I, uh, they're yeah. not, mm -hmm. we all get the smack down from life. Now, right. some people by nature are more resilient, just like some people are more risk tolerant. Yeah. But when you get into a room of CEOs or senior leaders, most of them, 
if they're well suited for the role, are all quite resilient and quite strong. Mm-hmm. So, so generally, when, if you've sustained leadership at a high level for a period of time, you, you, you have to be resilient to get there and stay there. But within that group, and there's a, there's a great thing I learned around mental health, all of us are one or two punches in the head away from a mental health issue. Sure. You know, to one or two life events. And, you know, a life event can be doing a renovation. It can be the loss of a loved one. It can be the birth of a child, your first child. That's a massive stress event. It can be making a lot of money, losing a lot of money. Um, Christmas, you know, or Mm. holidays can be stressful. So whatever it is, it's like, imagine you're in a ring with Mike Tyson. We might take one headshot. Might, I I don't even want to try, but (laughs) you might. You're not taking two. And I'll bet you a million dollars that nobody will take three headshots from Mike unless you're a professional fighter. You right. will be out on the mat seeing stars. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the same thing that happens with highly stressful events. And I'll, and I'll share an example. You know, entrepreneur I work with, I won't tell you the city. Um, he had a horrible thinking thing happen in his partnership. Um, and and his, his partner pulled the, the buy-sell clause or the shotgun clause. Shotgun, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the guy he built the business with, who um, this guy was the sales and marketing guy, his partner was um was the engineering brains of it you know similar to the pro- this type of partner you had in your business earlier on yes yeah and so the engineering brains guy uh, the technical brains guy came and said here's the thing you have 30 days to buy me out for 17 million dollars uh founding entrepreneurs that build companies you just don't have any cash because it's all in the business especially yeah. in the early stages so this guy had to go raise 17 million dollars I think he had 30 or 60 days. It was very quick for that kind of money. Um, he managed yeah. to get he, I it's going off. Nice. That's awesome. Sorry nice. About that. Hopefully they're, hopefully they're cooking something good. We can, we'll cut our mics and let you keep talking. Yeah. Cut, yeah, cut your mics. I'll just talk for uh, half an hour. That's yeah, we'll be good. Let me just, uh... Ooh, yeah, please. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right. There we go. So um, now we're on the Kevin podcast. Welcome. No. <laughs> These guys can't say anything. So no. So basically, um, he raises the 17 million and then they go and do all the paperwork and he, he had a lawyer who made a critical error. There wasn't a non-compete. So imagine this, you pay $17 million to buy out your engineering brains partner. And tomorrow he can go and compete with you in the identical business in the market. So that's called a horrible partnership agreement with, so buy him out and he's still your number one competitor. So that never mind the transition of, of buying the person out, taking the company yourself, not having a partner, the trauma. Yeah. And now he's, but he's still your competitor. Right. So uh, another CEO begged me to help this guy. I went and worked with him. Long story short, he was down in the ditch, like as yeah. low as you can go. Yeah. He was cooked, exhausted, everything. So worked with him, got him back on track and starting to get back on track, got him back doing his resilience rituals, which was running uh date night with his wife playing with his kids those three things were critical um but then he wasn't doing it so i had to arrange a meeting with his wife um unfortunately i arranged it at a starbucks that was not a wise choice because (laughs) he's cooked his wife's under pressure it became fairly emotional Mm. Uh, but we got a plan between her and i and him we kind of created this triangle where we made sure he was doing what he needed to do to get better and it was long story short, he got better. He is killing it now. Like he's three or four X where he was at. Life is great. But here's the thing you got to know. This guy was one of the toughest guys I'd met. Like mm-hmm. if we're going to go out and get in trouble when you're allowed to go to a bar and we're going to get in a fight, you want him beside you. He's going to drop everybody within 10 feet. He doesn't look like it, but he is, he's got, he's got that, that fire here and here and he's pretty strong. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but one day he called me. And so the normal check-in, I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? He just see his number. Nick Nigel's done lots of times. Yeah, how's it going, man? And he was having a rough time. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. hey, buddy, remember, I've been through this with lots of CEOs who've been burnt out, stressed out, and, and we're just on this rebuilding path. And I'm reminded, look, you're going to do this. Just keep going to the psychologist. Keep working out. Keep having good time with your wife and fun with your kids. It's going to get better. You got it. It will. Just trust me. Yeah. So kind of what, what, what you're found, saying what is... I found, is... What, what, I, finish, what right. I found out... A year later, when my writer interviewed him mm-hmm. to talk about his experience, 
he was going to go and kill himself when he made that call. Oh, he was wow. going to commit suicide. Wow. And he called me. Thankfully, I said, I mean, it feels like a big response. I said the right thing hmm. because he just, he just, he was, he lost hope and hmm. faith. And he never told me. He told my writer, which I then heard about it later because I, you know, guys, you don't want to tell everything. And, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I had another one, another CEO, and this is a real deal, you know, another CEO who, who called me in the middle of COVID, uh, who I'd met socially. And he's like, I think I need some help. And we started talking. I'm like, I'm listening to what he's telling me. I'm going, this guy is effed. Like, this is bad. Yeah. I'm like, I go, hey, you've been having any, you know, crazy or suicidal thoughts? He's like, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, now we need to have a different conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and I, again, I know the road to take them down, including always getting them to a psychologist. And I had him talk to the other guy. So they had a little, wow. a little bonding through the two guys that were in, deep in despair. And, and that guy now also is through his crazy madness and he's climbing out and going to do well. And, yeah. and so I guess what I'm sharing on all this stuff and what I've learned is that the pressure that we feel, and it's not just entrepreneurs and leaders, this happens to everyone, but you know, those guys had four or three headshots from Tyson. Yes. Yes. And I don't care how smart you are, how experienced you are, how wealthy you are, how connected you are, how tall you are, how good looking you are, how, how many degrees you got. Everyone can get knocked out by the stress of life. Yes. And it kills your mental health and it's mm-hmm. freaking dangerous because we're all so uptight about it. We don't want to admit we have weaknesses and we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now if you get help and you have the right conversations, you climb back out, you come out stronger, but when you're down in a ditch, sometimes you don't think you can get out. Yeah. And I've, and I've seen this and that's why I'm so passionate talking about it because it's like people, it's embarrassing mm-hmm. people, but you know, you know how many people I was having conversations with during COVID that were just like, mm-hmm on the edge, holding on with their fingernails. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I, I got, you know, it's, it's, I'm very passionate about it because it's like, it's the secret of the boardroom. Nobody talks about this. I know. And we get all of our people talking about it because it's normal. It's just the game. If you're a boxer, you're going to get knocked out. If you're a highly driven leader, you're going to get mentally knocked into a bad mental place. It's just the game. Exactly. And it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody, yeah. the yeah. smartest no, I, mean, I can go on and on about this. I have so many stories. And since I published yeah. the book, so many people have shared their stories of their experiences. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's because I'm just trying to open the conversation because it's just the yeah. real deal. Yeah. Dev, yeah, you had that's... a, you had a question. Yeah, there? Sorry, no, I just, Dev, I got, I was all good. No, that was, <laughs> no, awesome. that was all <laughs> excited. <laughs> <laughs> gotta Man, get excited. Uh, we gotta get stoked. <laughs> no, but I, what I'm hearing is it's kind of like mental health before the business. And then if you work on your mental health enough, the business will come, come with it. At a certain point, but people fight and fight to be on top of the business, 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 business. They start forgetting about who, what do I need? What is, what, you know, do I need to be out in nature? Do I need to be eat better? All those things, you know, eventually what makes you yes. feel better, will, which will make your company thrive. That's kind of what you're saying. That's a great way to put it, Devin. That's why it's your oxygen mask first, right? Like mm, if you don't yeah, keep yourself yeah. strong, resilient and inspired, um, everything, because the things, where what holds it together? We're the catalyst for our family being in a great place and being a great family. We're a catalyst for our companies or our cause being in a great place. And, and unfortunately, in our society, is this whole martyrdom, celebrate the martyrs. No, yeah, they're no. stupid. Yeah. They're stupid. Yeah. Like, yeah. If I give you the shirt off my back, metaphorically, it sounds beautiful, but then I'm going to freeze and I can't help the next guy or gal. Right. And so, so keeping your, making yourself stronger so that you can be more generous Mm -hmm. uh, is a big (laughs) deal. Poor people can't donate a lot of money to charities, right? Right. People that have resources and focus on building resources, whether it's energy, money or whatever can contribute, but you've, you've, you've got to build up your reserves and your resources to do good things in the world, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, like for myself, it was, I mean, you know, my, my trials and tribulations over the years from my business and the issues of my father, my father and all that stuff. But then I, later in my life, I I, I guess I'd had a lot of it bottled up, bottled up for years. And then later in my life, things started popping out. So I started having these anxiety and panic attacks just in the past couple of years. 
And there, I mean, it's horrific. And basically it's, you know, you, you can't think, you feel like you're in a tunnel, you hear your head echoing and your, your body shuts down. And it's totally random. I could be walking with my wife on a, you know, nature. I could be, I, it just happens. And then, um, so I mean, Devin, Devin really helped me with this when, um, we came down to Vancouver here during COVID and, 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 and whatnot, <clears throat> um, he got me into the kind of the, the breathing, right? So Wim Hof breathing and yep. laying down, he had me breathing. And then I was, then I built that into this morning routine, which we talked about before. And that's really helped me. It's really helped me so much. Not that I don't have anxiety. Attack. I still do, but they're not as bad and it's more controllable and I'm able to control them with breathing. And, but it was almost like PTSD, like your PTSD. Sure. Like it, PTSD. Was, it was all this stuff from my life has all built up from all those years of, you know, you know, trying to stay out of bankruptcy or trying to do this deal here, or flying down to Mexico to collect money from somebody that never paid us, whatever it was. Um, all that stuff all packaged up, but it wasn't popping out. Then it started popping out in my later life. And that's really, it was really, really scary. I, scary. And I think with you, it's like in people with such busy minds, like, you know, you was, you as well, Kevin, uh, getting in that, <laughs> getting in that cold water for you, Nige is just, it's mm. immediately, it grounds you. That's the yes. first thing you're like, yeah. boom, I'm here. I'm part of the earth. I'm part of nature. Can't think about anything else because I'm so damn cold. (laughs) This is what's going on right now, you know, and you could become acceptive of your place in the universe, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting way of putting it, but uh, but it is, it's it's forced meditation, really. It's it's, forced. It's kind of forced forced meditation. Exactly. It's meditation for people with ADD because (laughs) because you can't freaking focus. And you know, Nigel, I get, I get that same thing. My thing, my, you know, my ideal morning is to walk outside Yes. And then write. The yeah. walking brings my energy up. Everything flows and gets in a positive state. And then writing right. is therapeutic and gives me clarity and, and everything else. It's, it's so you're really... writing, you're, you're journaling. So you're, you're dumping Correct. your brain. That's what you're doing, right? You're dumping everything. Journaling, just writing about writing. whatever. It could be stuff that's going on in life or work or solving a problem. But just for me, pen and paper, I get so damn clear. Yes. Right. So energize my body clear my mind and and stuff just works and everyone's got different different and same thing with racing cars or motorcycles Mm. it's like it's similar to you know it's probably not as spiritual as the wim hof method but you know being up in a if you're in a race car at a hundred percent speed on a straight or in a quarter you can't think about anything else and you know and for people like us and maybe others you know there's peace in that intensity Mm-hmm. right and, and it would probably, it's probably what the whole Absolutely. cold lake thing feels like is that in that state yes. everything is clear uh all the right drugs are flowing through your system natural things are flowing through yeah. your system <laughs> and and you know and for me doing those that we've been up doing a lot of snow biking up in the mountains yeah some, i've seen that a lot I've of buddies yeah it's been amazing yeah and um so all that stuff is is awesome and it, but the, but it's the the activity and nature in some cases and the the, the community that you're doing it with mm-hmm. right. those right. things are just they're like magic and unfortunately during covid you know some parts of the world you can't do those things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and and some people just aren't comfortable doing those things but for me it's been my sanity yes like i gotta Likewise. get out yeah i gotta get out and i i put on more kilometers this year driving in last year than i have in a long time yeah because i'm like okay i gotta go somewhere you're talking about an airplane so I, I got to go somewhere. I've been going yeah. to a Soyuz, Klona, and Big White like crazy because mm-hmm. I'm just that's where, and and Whistler a bunch too because yeah. that's that's where the, these activities are and that tribe is that tribe is that 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 that, that you connect with and makes you feel good and well, you have a great. I, I think that I mean for me too, and I know for a lot of people that that you know it's so easy to get up in the morning and just work 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 till late at night every day on repeat repeat repeat, mm-hmm. but it's that separation. It's that separate, it could be for half an hour, it could be for an hour, it could be for a month to get away. And that's where all the clarity for me, I get clear. And that's where a lot of problems get solved. When I get away, I get into, my thing is nature. My thing is, was adventure, nature, skiing, climbing, yes. whatever. That's where I got my clarity. And then I'd come back to my business and a lot of things would be just make sense where it just that getting up every morning, looking at your cell phone. First thing, go, 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 go. You're like, you're like this, you know, you're totally it's, you can't think straight. You're just, you're just putting up fires all day. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah and that's what airplanes was for me. Airplanes and travel was for me before. Yeah. I'd have time in the airport. I would be into a different environment. Yeah. And then have time on a plane and I would write and I would do my best thinking. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, trying to recreate those habits in a different, so that, that was a natural environment. It happened. Right. Um, but if I'm in here in my place and working all day, you know, and not, you know, and again, getting outside and all stuff's great, but then I, but I, but I need a different environment to do some of that creative work. Some of my yes. best thinking, which is, mm-hmm. you know, when you've had a system of doing it one way, it's hard to change it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. I know. Deb, do you have uh, like on the younger uh, people's side of things? And because <laughs> yeah. Dev, Dev, Dev's got some businesses he's, he's got going here and it's uh, so he's kind of starting out. And so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I would definitely like to ask a, a question to you, Kevin. Um, sure. So if you could uh, basically, metaphorically speaking, go back to a younger version of yourself, let's say a high school version of Kevin, and you could tell him, you know, your key point of wisdom that you've acquired throughout the years of, you know, coaching and this and that, or even just, you know, how to deal with your mental health or whatnot, what would you say to that young man that would help mm. him guide him through the path of life, mm. basically? Great question. That's interesting because your son is is turning 18, right? And yes. so there's, you know, what wisdom, you know, wisdom going into because he's he's right. becoming a man. Exactly. A similar type thing, right? It is totally. <clears throat> there might be a little project I'm working on around that that I don't want it to leak out to him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'll see this or not. Um, but I am working on something very similar to that, Devin, which I'll share with you. Um so there's a few things that come to mind. One I was just talking about this morning, um, which is from Jim Collins. Um, Braden, my son, joined mm. me in, in, in the UK for a session we did with Jim Collins. We had a private wow. small round table afterwards. Oh, yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. And there was another, another CEO had his uh, kid there and, and, and they had a question for him is, what, what is your advice to young leaders, for young, young people who want to be leaders in business? Right. And, uh, and he said, read 100 biographies. Mm-hmm. So study, learn greatness from those that achieved greatness. Right. And you know, the number one is Winston Churchill's The Second World War. Now I got it over there. It's five volumes or six volumes and five thousand pages. Now it is available in audiobook. I just haven't listened to it yet. Wow. So that, that that would be one. Um second is that that you know, whatever you whatever you get excited about doing in your life, you know, surround yourself with an amazing team. Uh, and whether it's in the company, collaborators, mastermind, a forum, whatever it is, like just amazing people who are who are equally or more motivated than you. Um, I'd also say get great mentors that have already done it. Right. And then I would say, yeah, and then I would say figure out your resilience rituals. What do you need to do to be in your A game every day, which we've been talking about? It's massive. Because mm-hmm. if you just kind of roll into your day, oof yeah you, you can't you can't, it's like you know if you want to do big things in the world you need a routine closer to a pro athlete mm-hmm. right pro mm-hmm. athletes have a serious pre-game right yeah. and and you know, every day is a game for us so you need a serious that's what those resilience rituals are it's a serious pre-game so yeah, yeah. hunter biographies um amazing team that you surround yourself with um amazing pre-game and then buy as much re- real estate as you can when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the big yeah. One. yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting because um, I don't know if it's because of, you know, we've been locked down for so long. It, you know, I wake up, I wake up early. I wake up, say it's like five o'clock. I wake I, I, I just wake up. The thing is, is when you're awake at that, like your body's awake, but your brain is on fire. Like it, 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 yeah. tick, it, it ticks away, right? Um, could be half an hour, could be 20 minutes, could be an hour of just laying there in, in purgatory because your brain is just going. Of and I, I've just found for me is just like, I got to, sh- if it's five o'clock, if it's six o'clock or whatever, I'm just getting up because I'm just going to lay there. I, I won't be able to sleep. And my brain yeah, it, it just, it's just swirling. Yes. And it's swirling. And so if you get up and then get and don't check the phone, just get into that routine of mm. breathing and stretching. Yeah. And, and that sets you, it gets rid of all that clutter that you, that I wake up with at 5 AM with, and it sets me back for the day. And right now, cause I, I did my cold plunge today after that, I'm, I'm good. And I'm kind of, I'm mellow for a good three to four hours afterwards. It just, whew, you know, it's like you can deal with anything. 
it just yeah and that's and that's but that's setting yourself up to win and doing what you got to do for yourself first yeah, yeah. and 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 mm. not everyone has those routines but if you look at high performers like sustained mm-hmm. high performers they've got Oof. something like that oh yeah everybody yeah. does and yeah. and, it, and again it, it, it but you know success takes discipline period yes yes no matter what and and discipline is, some people think it's about creativity and inspiration it ain't it's discipline and that's a prime example of a great discipline. that's i like that thought nigel because again if i wake up and i lie there and just think i'm oh i'm just gonna run my, my it's, it's just, terrible it's terrible it is and yet i get up drink some water go for a walk or do something mm-hmm. you just you're you're at a totally Totally different level. Yeah, I love it. I also, I also would love to hear um, Reiko's view on uh, that you're totally <laughs> mellow for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> I think mellow might be a relative term, but for sure you're grounded. Right. No, for sure you, you're you're more grounded yeah, and like I a know. better version of yourself. Yeah, I know. I just, when, I, when I think of the word mellow, I don't picture Nigel. It's, it's funny because <laughs> when when you actually get out of the water, like de- we're all doing it. Reiko does it. Devin does it. Bianca does it. We all do it, right? We all do it every day. But it's there's that 20 minutes when you get out of the water, you're kind of stoned. So mm. you're I'm walking around the house, like bumping into things. And I'm like, I was, you know, I had, you know, I, my head was all soaking wet a few minutes ago. So I'm like, okay, is there a hair dryer? I don't use a hair dryer. But like, is there, Rico's like, and I'm bumping into it. I can't find the hair dryer. I'm fumbling around. I don't know how to use it. It's just like, I'm kind of out of it for a little while. So yeah. Yeah. Rico would, uh, yeah. Concur that I'm, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Unless, or either it's early onset uh, hypothermia, but uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that could be. Yeah, that's I don't, what I've it sounds that. like. I, I pushed it once. I pushed it Did you? once. Yeah. Well, I got really, Devin got me into this and it was working really well. And I was, you know, I was staying in the, in the water for about five minutes and then I got up to Whistler and then I was working my way up. I was doing, if I couldn't get into a pool, I'd do a cold shower. Cause that, that you know, if you can't do a pool or anything or a, you just, finish off with a cold shower. Easy, right? So I thought, okay, it was snowing outside. It was minus three. I'm going to go down to Alta Lake. It wasn't frozen, but there was snow all over the ground. I got my boots on. I go down there. Reiko came with me. My neighbor was going to come, Paul, but he he said, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm, not, I'm good for the showers, but I'm not ready. So I went down to Alta Lake. I stripped off onto the permafrost because it was frozen, went in, and I stayed in for nine minutes. Big mistake. Uh, I felt great great. It wasn't cold. I got out. My body was on fire, was on totally on fire. I'm like, I feel great. Started putting on my clothes, my boots, my down jacket. And then about seven minutes later, I just started, I almost passed out and Reiko had to get me back to my truck and I had some hot water in there and I stupidly drove. I had to pull over. I shouldn't have been driving. I had to pull over, got home. Dumb mistake as I jumped in the hot tub. Don't ever do that because you're not, you got to bring your body temperature back up slowly. So I had mild hypothermia and I felt horrible, sick for, so there's that. So I I ended up um, texting some Wim Hof um, instructors in Europe. I said, Hey, this happened to me. And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we base it on is water temperature correlates to the amount of maximum amount of time in the water. If it's three degrees, three minutes, it's five degrees, five minutes. And I'm like, okay, so. Yeah, of course, you got to do everything at 11 right now. So that's <laughs> usually what happens. But I only took it to nine. And nobody died. But, you know, the truth is, for a lot of us, that's how we learn. Like, I learned by going too far and making a mess. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. And, and, you know, what's interesting is they say that, Nigel. And first of all, like, the cold water thing. I mean, I've been to the Scandinav Spa. I love the Scandinav Spa from Whistler. Yeah, yeah. And they have the cold plunge pools. But they do. Like, I'm good for about... 7.2 seconds you know, I'm, not, I'm not that's like good. Cold, that's good cold water and me like i they're not friends so and, this is and- this is interesting this is really interesting and i don't know if devin showed me that i think devin mentioned this to me so this is what happens uh you go into any cold water and your body fight or flight instant boom you're like oh i gotta get out so you get out you last three seconds out yeah my buddy my buddy ian was coming up here and he says i'm ready to do it he jumped in i'm in there and i'm meditating and he's in he's running around only up to his waist it's fucking cold and then he jumped out right and but then but now he's doing the ice plunge and the in whistler with us and all this stuff what the body does it's interesting as soon as you jump in it goes fight or flight i gotta get out yes if as yeah. soon as you go in and you feel that I listen, I listen, I think my body's really like, smart. I listen. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a trick. It's interesting. If you go and you feel that little, it's cold and then relax, 
as soon as you go relax, you're totally fine. And mm -hmm. you can stay for min minutes and minutes. It's that instant fight or flight. I got to get out. But if you just go ah, and breathe, it's, it's a try. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely, isn't it Duff? It's just absolutely yeah. incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I will, I will try so anyway. it next time I go, but it freaks me out. Yeah, like, just, just, and, and, and I know what, like everything is cycle. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Just I'll remember that. <sighs> exhale. Yeah. So okay. yeah, <laughs> I guess we should Makes probably wrap it. her up on this. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> but what uh, I was saying is on, on, yeah. on, on the piece we were talking about, about the making mistakes though, like that is mm -hmm. the best way to learn. Yes. And just to be willing to like, I, you know, Brayden and I were up in big white last week and we're driving back on, on, on the beginning of the Coquihalla. And up on this mountainside, we invested in a real estate development that went really bad. And we basically mm. have a whole bunch of cash buried up in the mountain, you know, or oh. invested in a mountain with no return. Yeah. And maybe we'll get it back one day. But, you know, I, I talked to him about how that was like, I, you hate mm. losing a bunch of money. But man, what we learned from that big screw up right. um, has paid off more than paid for itself in other things. Because, yes. you know, by learning what not to do, you learn what to do. That's yes. And unfortunately, that's where most of our wisdom comes from. Yeah, you can do study all the right things, but it's when you screw up, you get kind of the you know that visceral reaction and that you know internal learning, mm -hmm. and you know, and maybe it's my rationalization because I still make tons of mistakes, but I'm just like, yeah, it's a great way to learn. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. and and if you if you if you if you and I used to be earlier in my life, I'd be too worried about it and slow my down myself down on stuff. But if you just kind of go for it and and more 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 often, you can still think. But be more willing to take risks and make mistakes. You learn way faster and you grow faster. Yeah, yeah. I as do. long as you don't die from hypothermia. I, yeah. I think that I don't know. I don't know if it was our our era. <laughs> our era, like our we're we're more like cowboyish because you know we're more cow. Like we oh we try this, we try that. Mm -hmm. I think. I and mean, my observation is, is is younger generations. Devin could probably um, share a little bit more light on this. Is that it seems to be a little bit more conservative, which is really strange because of social media and what people think about them yeah and i i don't want to do the risk i don't want to put that out there because what other people think where we would be hell yeah i'm gonna go do this i'm gonna go do that i'm gonna fail smack on my face but i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna continue yeah because there was there was no evidence because nobody could see there, there was it no nobody evidence. could see it exactly there was no, exactly there That's wasn't right. everything like i remember and i'm not going to tell all the story a lot of really dumb stuff we did as teenagers oh, like oh. really yeah. dumb and i was talking with my kids they can't do those things, no, which I'm can't. happy for as a parent, yeah. because somebody's going to have their phone going I know, and, they're gonna see and it's it. going to yeah. create serious. Re I mean, yeah. I remember the stuff me and my buddies did in our cars. Oh, like, I know. I know. Oh, but you can't do that these days. You, like literally exactly. can't, unless you go back in the middle of nowhere in some smallville town and yeah, somebody will be there though they'll still yeah I, exactly and there's a camera on you somewhere but yeah it, it is interesting yeah. i don't know what do you think yeah. about all that devin like you're no, you're you're, you're yeah, in that no that's generation. totally right that's totally right and it's the same thing with the phones of having you know you have this this gadget that you can use to film things but you also have this gadget that you can use for endless information where you know my dad is kid you guys as a kid it was like we didn't you didn't have that you can go look up a book and you can go how is a business not going to run no that's there's i don't know there's nothing on that right but now it's like oh i want to run this business this flower shop or whatever i can look up this one didn't work this way this one didn't work and that deters you from maybe taking those risky steps because you have uh, all this information now you go oh well that didn't work that didn't work that didn't work okay maybe i won't try it which is kind of the wrong thing because you should still go try it in your own way but you should use all those mistakes like you're saying kevin you should use all those people's mistakes because exactly they, they from the mistakes they've had growth and then you can use yeah. all that growth in your own mm -hmm. way um but yeah definitely it'll deter you from you know if you were like oh i'm gonna make an oil skimming company but now if you looked up that oh there's all these competitors there's it's a giant thing oh da, da, da. okay mm -hmm. maybe not gonna maybe not gonna do that so yeah. i think that's why the people yeah there's a little mm -hmm. less risk but um, yeah and also with, and then then the other, and the other factor of like just being in public and doing something crazy or, you know, driving your car really fast and, or whatnot. It's like, yes, there's cameras everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. The, the whole, the whole new age of these things has changed, changed a lot of the, changed a lot of the world for the, for better and maybe, and maybe a lot worse in some aspects. Yeah, I think it's about like my, my daughter, Ashley, she's 15 and she's built her own wow. little business wow. off of, in I know Ashley's 15. Wow. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's built a business off Instagram uh, for their dog called Fluffy Pup. And she started building an Instagram account when they got a puppy last year. But now she's selling dog bandanas on this thing. She's already getting mm -hmm. close to 600 dog bandanas she sold around the world. 
wow. mostly U.S. and Canada. Hmm. So she had an idea. She started promoting on Instagram through her dog's account. Yes. And next thing, and she's got models and doing model searches for people to represent her brand. And she's uh-huh. doing, and so, so at 15, she, you know, yeah, she started, I think it, she was, might've still been 14 when she started, but at 15, you know, she's doing, she's got her own little production facility down in her basement where she's got her sewing machine. I always, on the weekends, we often go to fabric stores. She's trying to figure out, find a fabric for her next collection. Yeah. She's got, so, so she has all of these, like it's beyond business 101. Mm-hmm. And she's building a brand and marketing and getting and doing that mm-hmm. all off her phone. Right. Like it's all, it's all I in. Know, it's so, so, so when there's the, the, the risk averse side, there's also the, the more opportunities because mm-hmm. like I had all kinds of businesses, but I was like selling in the neighborhood, right? Yes. She's selling yes, like all me. over the place. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's different. And, and uh, yeah, it's fascinating. It's fat. And anyway, I'm always careful to be careful because it's, because there's amazing um, article I read about um, a millennial millennials mm-hmm. and what this one researcher said, he said, well, there is zero evidence to back it up that there is any notable difference from millennials and others, except mm-hmm. for hundreds of years, there's the stories that old people say about young people. <laughs> seriously and what he said now millennials are hot in the media and everyone's talking about it but it's all based on nothing yes but there is generation so millennials it's of course like from the perspective of old people it's a young entitled lazy generation mm. just uh, that's what the 60 and 70 year olds have been saying about that's kids what they said centuries. about us yeah it is what they okay. said about us and the ones before and the ones before, and the ones before that's right so there, there are differences but that's right. just society. There's always the young generation that's easy to pick on, and the old generation that thinks it was better in their day when they walked up, <laughs> walked to school uphill both ways in the snow and bare feet. Yeah, you know, that's it's right. just like it, know. it's fascinating, and that's and yeah. that's why you know, and, you know, and, and Devin, for people, you're, you know, your generation and my son and such, and staying open to how they do things and how mm-hmm. they work and think is awesome. So that we don't become the crusty old guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> Adapt to change and move yeah. forward. Yeah, right. exactly. That's right. Oh man, that's awesome. All righty, we better wrap her up here. We're gonna run out of bandwidth. Yeah, we can wrap her up with that one. If you would like to know more about Kevin Lawrence, check it out. We'll put the link in the description. Check out his book, Your Oxygen Mask First. And he's got some more books on the way, which we will be blowing up on here as soon as those come out. Do you have any last thoughts for us? And also thank you so much for coming on the show, Kevin. Yeah, no, you know, it's awesome to do this. You guys, like you guys are awesome. Nigel, you've been an inspiration to me over the years with the stuff that you've done beyond your business, like you're an amazing father and what you've done as a father and, 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 and what you've done with the, you know, with the, with the charitable things you've done in the world, that amazing trip we did to Mexico, like Nigel, you're a catalyst for a lot of amazing things in the world. And, you know, people like you are great role models for what entrepreneurs and successful people can be because people that don't know the real deal think most successful people are assholes. Mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. and and you know and so you're just it's you're, and not you've always it's, our relationship's been amazing and Devin getting to know you and do some work with you is awesome too but I think like, you're doing great stuff in the world Nigel and it's you know I'm inspired by people who make amazing oh, things thanks. happen and, and you're 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 wow. you're an awesome I mean I, I really I really appreciate what you say Kevin it means a lot to me and to Devin and it, honestly I wouldn't have been able to do or we wouldn't have been able to do it without without you. So you were a strategic, critical part to our lives, our family, everything that we've ever done. So I, I, I owe, and I, I tell everybody this. He, he does. I can contest to that. Yeah. yeah. So, You're a key component in uh, getting yeah. Niger's brain yeah. to function. <laughs> yeah. 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 For, him, for him to be like chill and calm for three hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but Nigel, right. it takes, and, and again, it goes back oh, to what we oh, said. It takes you. a tribe, man. It, it takes, takes a, a group of people takes, who are right. in harmony it takes a tribe. Yeah. It, 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 it does all the components from, you know, Reiko and the family and then the business, everybody, we're all, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. Right? Correct. It's, it's really nice to have a really nice solid tribe and, and you're one of them. So thanks so much, Kevin. And thanks so much for being on our show. Yeah. Yes. Thanks you guys. I'm glad to see you doing it. Have an awesome one. And by the way, my podcast, The Growth Whispers, you can also listen to. Got a buddy yes. in Australia that we do it with. Let me throw that in the links there, Devin. Yeah. Where we talk oh, about fantastic. scaling companies and building them to, to keep them growing for a long time. All right. Have an we awesome will. one. All right. Thanks.